Welcome back to another geometry lesson. This is Mr. Zdorchek, as always. And in today's lesson, we're going to take a look at partitioning a segment. Partitioning a segment means to break it apart into parts or split it apart. So, so we've done that even in our last lesson. We've actually split a segment, or in this case, a piece of candy at the midpoint, making two equal pieces on either side. Today's lesson, we'll be splitting it into uneven pieces. Sometimes life isn't fair. Let's look at question number one together. It says, let the dashes below represent three different strings of candy. And these candy strings are going to be broken or split apart into two pieces, according to the ratio that you see next to each string. It says to show the point on each string that will break it according to the ratio shown. So the first one is meant to be kind of easy, that the ratio is one to one. A ratio of one to one means it's completely fair, where each person or each friend would get the same amount of candy, because the, that number is the same on both sides of that colon. So where would you actually split the candy? You would split it exactly where you'd think, right at the midpoint. That would give each kid four inches of candy. The ratio would be four to four, which reduces to a one to one ratio, which is showing an even split. So how come, what happens when it's not even? Well, sometimes it's kind of easy, like for, for the next string. If the ratio is seven to one, it means that one friend is gonna get seven times the amount of candy compared to the other kid. So think to yourself where you would actually break this candy string up so that one friend receives seven times as much candy as the other friend. So it doesn't take maybe a lot of thought process to get to the point where P would be where you'd break it because one kid's earning or getting seven inches and the other kid's only getting one inch. So the ratio would be seven to one if you split the candy at point P. All right, this one's a little bit, doesn't look like it's going to be much different or difficult, but it might be a little more difficult than the last one. If the ratio of the candy is supposed to be three to one, where would you split the candy? So a ratio of three to one is that means that one kid gets triple the amount compared to the other. So where would you split the candy? If you chose this point here, Let's see if that's right. If you, if you chose right there, that would give the first kid two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six inches of candy, and the second kid two inches of candy. So the one kid is getting triple the amount compared to the other. You'd get a ratio of six to two, which reduces to three to one. There's a few other ways to figure out where you'd split it. This is actually quite a handy way to figure it out too. If the ratio is supposed to be three to one, it means you want to break up the big piece of candy into four smaller pieces. And we'll give the one friend three of those pieces and the other friend one of those pieces. If the total length of the candy is eight inches long, and you're gonna break it into four smaller pieces, you divide them you'd find out that each piece would be worth two inches long so there's one it there's one piece of candy it's two inches there's another piece that's two inches there's another piece that's two inches and there's a fourth piece that's two inches the one friend's gonna get three of those four pieces and the other person will only get one we're gonna go Practice. We're going to be practicing some more of that coming up soon. Before we do that, though, there are some definitions that we should go over just to make sure we're clear on a few things. Um, what you should know already is that lines are infinite. Lines stretch forever, forever in both directions, and you know that they're infinite because of the arrowheads that appear on both ends of the line. Since a line is infinite, since it stretches forever and ever, off the page and you know out of the solar system in both directions 
Since it's infinite, you won't be able to partition or find the midpoint of a line. In a, in a line segment, though, you will be able to break it up because a line segment is part of a line, and that line has two endpoints, A and B. And the, one of the strange things about a segment, which we haven't talked too much about so far, is that a segment truly does not have a beginning and an end. Well, I guess typically we, we sometimes say that the leftmost point is sort of like the beginning when we're counting slope. But if it's just called the segment, either end is considered to be just an end and there's no beginning to it. All right, so today's uh, new vocabulary word will be a directed line segment. And this is what a directed line segment looks like, which is exactly the same look as a regular segment. The only difference is if it's called a directed line segment, and if it's called directed line segment, in this case, AB, that means that A is actually the beginning and B is the end. The order of the letters in its name tells you what the beginning is and what the end is. For example, if it was called direct line segment BA, then B would be the start and A would be the end. So segments and directed line segments look identical to each other. But in a directed line segment, it has this understood order, which will actually help us, which will actually help us um, determine where to actually break these segments up. All right, so more practice with directed line segments first and ratios all rolled into just one question. So I'll lead you through a practice on three of these six questions, and then you can try three on your own. So taking a look at how these segments are broken up, it says determine the ratio of the directed line segment when it is partitioned by point P. So in question A, it says that this is directed line segment DC. So D is the beginning and C is the end. And D is getting one of the pieces and C is getting three of the pieces. So that would be a ratio of one to three, if we're gonna score it. So C ends up winning, wins three of the four pieces. For question B, if it's called directed line segment RT, R is the beginning and T is the end, and R is getting one of the segments and T is getting one, two, three, four. So it'd be a ratio of one to four. And let's see one more example. Oh, H looks like it's going to be the winner on this one because this is called directed line segment HG. So H is the beginning. H has earned two of the three pieces, while G has only earned one. So this would be a ratio of two to one. Once you pause the video and continue to do question D, E, and F, then unpause when you're ready. All right, the ratio here would be two to four, which you can reduce to one half. The ratio, or one over two, or one to two, or two to four, either one is correct. For E, the directed line segment is called RT. R gets two, while T gets three. So the ratio would be two to three. And this one here, T, getting four, while R is getting one. The order of the letters matters, and the order of the letters follows the order of the directed line segment. All right, so that's just all been pretty good warm up, and let's suppose your head's still spinning on all this. It's intended that questions three and four kind of get you to the point where you're starting to feel confident about this. So consider the beginning is just a warm up to some of this terminology, understanding some of the vocabulary and also getting accustomed to ratios. I bet you'll be surprised if you were paying good attention, I bet you'll be surprised on three and four of how well you know these um, kinds of how to do questions like these. So question three, we'll do it together, but I'm going to give you a chance to think about it before I give you the answer. 
For question three, directed line segment AB is to be partitioned in a ratio of two to three. Well, it says it's a directed line segment, so which point is the beginning of the segment? Is it A or B? If it's called directed line segment AB, then A would be the beginning. Which part will be longer, the beginning or the end for this example? So the ratio is 2 to 3, and it's called directed line segment AB. Which part will be longer, the beginning or the end? It would be the end, because the second number is larger than the first number. So B would actually win this tug of war. It would get three of the smaller pieces, while A will only get two of them. All right, and then question C says, to find the coordinates of point P so that it partitions the segment in a ratio of two to three. All right, so one little trick you can do is you can count up how far it is all the way from beginning to end, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it's 10. So it's a total of 10 units long, or 10 inches, you could call it. And if the ratio is supposed to be two to three, how many pieces are we going to break up the segment into? Well, ratio of two to three means we want to break it into five smaller pieces. In the beginning, we'll get two of those five, and the ending, we'll get three of those five. So each little segment is going to be two units long. I can decorate with different colors to make it stand out. So if we're going to be busting it up into five little pieces, each of them are two units long, we'll get our segment decorated that way. Now we just have to figure out where to put point P to actually split it. So let's find the coordinates of point P. Well, all that thinking that we did at the beginning is paying off for us. We know that B will be the winner. B will get three of the pieces, and A will be the loser. Just remember, don't you don't be the loser. Make sure you answer the question. It says to determine the coordinates of the point. So at the end, you have to tell them you would split it at the point 3, negative 1 to make it happen. All right, let's take a look at a diagonal example. Again, you can always replay this lesson if you need to. And of course, there's also plenty of help available too. So uh, so reach, so uh, take advantage of the help, either help each other along, and if that's not good enough, then, then seek the help out for myself or our other teachers too. So question four, determine the coordinates of point P that will partition directed line segment JL by a ratio of two to, by a ratio of two to one. Well, it's a directed line segment, which means J is the start. So J will win this tug of war and win two of the three pieces. So when it's diagonal like this, what's kind of nice about these diagonal ones is your instincts about what you've done so far in this course will kick in. I mean, if, you, if I show you a diagonal segment, I bet... And I didn't say that there was any, and I didn't even give you a question about it. I just said, here's a diagonal segment. What can you tell me about it? Probably the very first thing that every student will probably do is uh, figure out the slope. So the slope here is going down. One, two, three, four, five, down six, over. Down six over nine. So sometimes your math instincts will just kick in and you'll start doing things that will help you figure out the answer. So we're not after the distance from J to L. We're trying to break down that slope into smaller slopes so we can get smaller little segments on that diagonal. How many total pieces are we trying to break it into? Three, a total of three different pieces. So you can divide each number of the slope by three. And this is a very useful trick. So we want to go down to over three. And if we use those mini slopes, 
of down two over three, down two over three, down two over three, what we what will we, what will we have uh, tongue trouble. What will we have what we will have here, haha, will be three different segments, which is what we wanted to do. And now we just have to give two of those segments to J. So the, the point that we're going to use to break the segment up in a ratio of 2 to 1 would be right there at point P. Now we just have to give the coordinates so we don't want to be a loser on this one. So the coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3, comma 4. All right, you're probably about ready to do a few on your own. I would say replaying that fourth example might be very nice to do if you're working on this video before you try question number five. All right, so let me give you some time to think about question five. Well, how about five, six, and seven? Why don't you take a little break for about 10 minutes and work on questions five, six, and seven? For question five and six, you can use the grid. So that's very helpful for five and six is to use the grid here. With question six, we're looking for the end point. So watch out. So make sure you're paying attention to what the directions are all about there. And for question seven, one thing you notice right away is that the coordinates are kind of wacky with it going at 22 comma two. Well, let me just give you some time on your own to try this first and then unpause the video when you're ready to see the rest of the answers. Okay, unpause your video. You can see I've given you just the answers alone for now. For question five, the answer is four. For question six, the end point we're looking for is 10, negative five. And for question seven was 12, comma two. If you're pretty solid on all of that, then you're good to go. Uh, if you need some extra explanation on that, here it comes. So for question five, what I did is I sketched out the original segment, PQ. Notice that there's a little mark over here. When I first plotted point P, I made a mistake. And that's not an intentional mistake. I went negative seven positive five, and I was about to write the letter P there, then I double checked my numbers, and I said, oh, it was negative. It's a good thing that I caught that, because I would have done the entire question wrong if I put P there. So you want to make sure you do a double check to make sure that your points are in the right spot, and Q is five, positive three. All right, so the line segments graphed correctly, and what we're going to do is repeat that process that we did on the question number four. If the slope is, well, the slope of PQ is up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 8, over 2, 4, 6, 8, 12. So it's up, up 8 over 12 is what the slope is that gets me from P to Q. I'm trying to break it in a ratio of one to three. I want to break it into, well, one plus three is four. So I want to break it into four even pieces. And the way to break it up into four even pieces, visually, is you take the slope and divide the numerator and denominator by, in this case, four. So the pattern that I need is up two over three. And if I follow the pattern of up two over three, I will see that the segment has been broken into four even pieces. And now all that's left to do is find out who won that tug of war between the two endpoints. So it says P and Q, and it says that three, one to three, so the three goes with the Q. So it means Q needs to get three of those pieces, one, two, three, and poor, um, oh, it says we're supposed to call this point A. And um, poor P here gets only one of those pieces. 
Uh, remember to answer the question. It says to know the coordinates. So the coordinates would be negative 4, negative 3. All right, for question 6, you might have been waiting to hear this answer. For question 6, they're telling us that, P is one, that B is one of the endpoints, and it is the beginning of the directed line segment, and we're looking for the other endpoint. Since the ratio is supposed to be 2 to 3, so in this tug of war, if it's called directed line segment BR, B should lose that battle. B would only get two of the, of the five pieces that are there. So what I did to figure out this answer is I just tried to break that distance down from P to Q, from B to P into two even pieces. So I figured out by going four to the left and one up, I could create two pieces, one, two. And if the ratio is supposed to be 2 to 3, then I've got to give R three of those pieces. So I went 4 to the left, 1 up, 4 to the left, 1 up, 4 to the left, 1 up, which got me to point R. So you see R has earned 1, 2, 3 of those pieces, while B has earned 2 of those pieces. Naming the coordinates is something they want me to do, determine the coordinates, so don't forget to do that. And that brings us to the last explanation of the lesson, which is, excuse me, question number seven. All right, so the thing to notice there is that the points are off the grid, but in a very kind way, the y values are two for both points. So we got four comma two, and we got 22 comma two. So the slope between the two of those would be up 0 over 18. If you just did some careful subtraction or counting, so the slope would be up 0 over 18. It says to break it into a ratio of 4 to 5. That means we want to break it into 9 equal pieces. So to get those equal pieces, we're going to go up 0 over 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, if it says that point A is going to earn 4 of those 5 pieces, I know that my answer is going to be right here at 12, 2. Because each of these smaller pieces is going to be 2 units long. So as it turns out, I just have to move over 2, 4, 6, 8 to the right of 4 to, to end up getting at 12, and the y coordinate would stay the same. All right, well, hopefully it's been a good experience for you. Hopefully you're in pretty good shape with this just after just one day, and remember the support's there. So uh, continue to push yourself to be the best you can, and now you learned something. Have a great day.